The presentation today is about one of the most important, challenging, difficult, and mediatic, if you wish, topics in the United States and in the world, which is the topic of global warming. global environment and sustainable development, I chose the title and I chose the presentation center on the global warming issue. Um, the signals of global warming is what I'm going to start presenting to you initially. On the grounds that a picture is worth a thousand words and many more than a thousand words. I want you to understand how important this topic is, not just to all of us here, but our descendants, for the survival of entire human species for centuries to come. It's a concept that is particularly well understood in a country like Greece, with thousands and thousands of years of history, and perhaps lesser in the Americas, which are you know, the, the culture in the United States is, you know, very little known. In Antarctica, which is a, you know, the southern cone at the top, the glaciers and the ice sheets are melting. In Alaska, the permafrost is melting. The permafrost is the frozen soil where the cities are melting in Alaska. As the permafrost melts, entire towns are sinking the water today in Alaska, and people are being mobilized and moved away. This is a, just a picture of the melting ice sheets in Alaska. And you can see that we see the ice as well. And the challenges to the human settlements. Green glass, which is near Alaska, I would say, also shows wreckage in the ice. And in Antarctica, I was recently there, you can see the glaciers melting. Now you may say, well, the glaciers melting, but there are two issues about the glaciers melting. First of all, a lot of people in the world drink water from glaciers. And this includes people in Europe, particularly in Switzerland, but also in the southern coin, coin Chile and Argentina. But the glaciers are also important because their stability is the stability of the sea level. So when they melt and they become melted water, which increases in volume, the sea level is rising. Why is that of importance? Because of beautiful countries such as this, and in very large countries such as Bangladesh, have very large segments of the population at the sea level in the coasts. And as the sea rises, particularly those whose income is not very high, are going to find themselves under water. Bangladesh by itself will disappear. After Alaska, which is right now falling under water, Florida in the United States is the next site. And in Greece, the areas around the coasts are going to be trapped. This is very, very serious. This is another picture about the infant connecting uh, ice sheets. All our species are finding themselves in completely different conditions, and as you know, the polar bears are now a very threatened species that may not be here in the next 20 years. Uh, these are mountains that were covered with ice and water that was used by the towns no longer available. I was recently in Antarctica where you could see the ice dissipating into water. In Patagonia, the same thing. And this means the the sea, the the world. The ice sheet in India is really the biggest gorilla in the exercise because if the ice sheet in Greenland uh, becomes water, then it's going to have a catastrophic event where the sea level will rise one or two meters. Just think about what we do in the first time later. Now, the other side of the question is all about what else today, the global warming issue. The other side of the question is that there is a lot of 
deforestation that is partly driving global warming, or we don't know that, but partly <coughs> created of global warming. Because global warming means desertification. And it establishes the conditions for the type of fires, the trashy fires that we have in the recent that meant the death of 60 people and million members affected and thousands of families. I want to disagree. Outbreaks of malaria are predicted because as the temperature changes, the vector uh, illnesses that are like malaria go to new areas become uh, um, more spread, widespread in areas that are not exposed before. And the issue is that all of this that we are experiencing is driven by industrial growth. I put here a picture about China's industrial growth because China, with a 10% increase in the GDP per year for the last 10 15 years, is actually just a late comer and not the most important contributor, contributor at all in this dilemma. The real reason global warming is here today is the success of globalization and industrialization, particularly since the Second World War, after the American institutions were created. Industrialization has led to tremendous use of energy, and 89% of all the energy reducing the planet is fossil fuel, coal, <coughs> natural gas, and coal. 89%, just about all of it. Why that matter? Because in the burning of fossil fuels, we emit carbon dioxide, and carbon dioxide coats, as it burns, the planet with a blanket that keeps the heat and releases the cause of the water. So we are in the perverse situation where we need more growth for a lot of people who are in the areas close to poverty or in the poverty. Asia and in America and in Africa. And yet, the energy that we need is 89%, 90% of the energy that we use today is fossil fuel and therefore creates carbon dioxide. It's being between a rock and a hard place. China, right now, because of its industrial demands, is building one coal plant per week. And the world as a whole is building two coal plants. These are power plants that produce electricity per week. Among other things, we are changing the composition of the sea. Anybody here in Green has a, uh, a sea loving history. The, the sea is actually the basis of life as we know it. And the corals in the world are disappearing because one of the implications of carbon dioxide is that they get absorbed and may change the pH chemical level of the sea that is, becomes much more acidic. As it becomes more acidic, corals, which are basic, are being eaten up and disappeared. The desertification produced by the change in temperature is changed the composition of 25% of China's landmass already. Australia has recently had the longest drought in record. In the Arctic Sea, the summer ice is no longer there. In Switzerland, you basically cannot. Last year, you just couldn't ski. But the foundation for water is not there. You have soil erosion and soil surges in Alaska. And leading to the attempt, in ways that we're going to discuss next, to replace our fossil fuel infrastructure, the way we produce energy, by what means that don't use uh, fossil fuels but still produce electricity, such as wind farms. This is one example where we're going to talk about that. This is a solar farm in Spain. And uh, I want to mention to you what I will in a few minutes that solar energy is the biggest hope that we have for being able to provide energy to the planet and the world needs <coughs> energy. We really need energy to provide it in a way that doesn't produce carbon emissions and destroys all the planet. The 
for the other river is essentially dried up. It used to run from the United States to Mexico. By the time it gets to Mexico, it is not there. All of California is essentially being fed by the Colorado River. This is how it looks, the basin of the Colorado River, one of the mightiest rivers in the United States. And the reason why the United States can provide agriculture so efficiently is because of the water from this mighty river. This is how it looks now. In Colorado, the farmers are being told to turn off farm water. This is the record law in Lake Mead that provides water to all of that glass area. So you can see the uh, situation. And you can see the Colorado River dwindling before it goes dry. You can see the arid areas that were generated by this process. At the same time, the industrial growth continues, and as Vegas new construction site doubled the requirement for water. And you can see here how recent droughts, years, across much of the west of the United States, have fueled wildfires like this one in April 2006, which were in Colorado, but have a tragic resemblance to what happened in these recent years. Indeed, that's the consequence from drought, the uh, creation of larger and more dangerous and widespread fires. The ecosystems in the world are being changed, challenged, because the change in temperature means that species cannot survive where they used to survive before, the water that they require disappear, and therefore the vegetation disappears. And this is just an example of the Uh, was to join the Fundación Bariloche in 
Patagonia, Argentina, and create the concept of basic needs to answer the model that was then prevalent in MIT for years ago to explain why developing countries could develop without putting an end to the world resources. That was the thesis of the Minister of Argentina, sometimes in Celtics. And I was determined to prove that developing countries could grow. And we have we developed a uh, biological model, and within that, a fault. We focus on all the development on the satisfactory basic needs, which is key in a developing country. And it's totally different than the concept of economic development based on measuring GDP. This concept of basic needs in 1992 became, became the cornerstone of the definition of sustainable development in the Earth Summit in Rio de Janeiro. So I feel very proud of having been there so many years ago, fighting against the tide for basic needs, for the environment, and realizing that any single piece of natural resource exported from Africa, exported from Latin America, was not just contributing to underdevelopment, so it was just wrong but it was also contributing to the destruction of the